Hello, and welcome to Our Ventura TV. I'm MB Hanrahan, and today my guest is Susan Scott. Okay, Susan, I'm going to try this. A nonprofit organization development per developer. Consultant. Consultant. Yes. Specializing in the arts. That's right. Good to be with you, MB. <laughs> <laughs> Explain. Anything that either affects the operations of an organization or takes on a special project character can fall within my bailiwick and probably has right. at one time or another. You specialize in the arts. I do today, yes. Okay. The arts have always been huge in my life. Uh, but when I moved to California um, some years ago, they became almost the sole focus of my nonprofit and for that matter, my, my staff practice. So I've done a lot of work with both performing arts organizations mm. and and, uh, and non-performing arts organizations. And it's and it's been actually the arts that have kept me here. Wow. Uh, and uh, one arts assignment after the other sort of came my way. Um, and it's still and they're still coming my way and I'm still here. But it's been great. Well I do know that arts organizations come and go, but it's okay if you name drop a few local organizations that you've worked with just so people can Go, you know, nonprofit arts or organization. I well, know, you know, ones, but just. Well, I'm the founding executive director of the Bell Arts Factory, mm -hmm. and at the time, of course, it was one of the last, if not the last, functioning mattress factories. It was Bell right. Mattress Factory on the Avenue. And the partners were ready to give up the mattress part of it. The partner who was going to keep it was looking at what do we transform it into mm. next. I met one of the partners who said, why don't we do something together and do it in the arts? For me, it blended what I knew about community organization, right. what I knew about institution building with my love for the arts, and so we took that on. I thought it would be a year's project. It was a two-year project. Uh, and then from there, um, the Ventura County Community Foundation mm. uh, had a grant from the Irvine Foundation yes. to do a three-year initiative under it. was a community building in the arts initiative. I took that on on pretty much a half-time or 60% basis. I was a consultant, but it was that much of a commitment. And so I did that, and that was about ca capacity building mm. uh, among arts organizations throughout the county. So that took me from a real grounding in the city and a particular arts organization to a grounding in the county, right. pretty much with the arts organizations countywide. And it al also involved the uh, creation of an endowment and an, uh, for um, emerging artists that would be in perpetuity at the foundation. But that was a lovely experience, and so, uh, and, I and it broadened my, you know, further. I've been managing director of a couple equity theaters located in Ventura <laughs> County. True. Um, and uh, as you know, I've worked for one of the music festivals yes. uh, in Ventura County. So it's been a pretty broad cross-section uh, of arts organizations. At one point I was on the board for a few years of the Arts Council, of the Countywide yeah. Arts Council. So I've done things with the city of Ventura on their grants panel and otherwise. So it's been a, a, a pretty um, diverse and I would say uh, comprehensive experience of arts organizations in, uh, in certainly in this county. And I've done some work in LA as well. I mean, there's some that would, you know, in hearing the word arts and then hearing the word organization, they almost seem yeah. like, what? <laughs> you know, here's the arts, woohoo, let's be creative. But really, to have anything last and to impact and to get the word out and get people to come to these things, it needs to be approached kind of like a business, really. Well, as business-like as, as, business -like. as is possible, and, they're certainly, uh, and they certainly have to have uh, a mission that they can communicate. They mm. are required to have a board. Uh, there's no arts organization in the world, even if it's totally volunteer-run, and I'll come back to that exception in, in, in a moment, but there's no, otherwise there are very few arts organizations that can exist without some level of funding. Uh, for most of the arts organizations in, in this county, it's going to be donor-based. Uh, there are some grants available. The city of Ventura, as you know, has been a, uh, a grant maker, yep. for, at least for the whole time that I've been here. These aren't grants that would sustain an organization no. completely, but they help. Some arts organizations, depending on their mission and depending on their 
um, on the uh, yeah mainly depending on their mission and their operations may have access to some other funding but there isn't much of a foundation base locally so if they're dependent on local funding and most are it's going to be largely donor based and earned income and for right. earned income we're talking about ticketed kinds of things or other things that can be sold special events raise money on a special event basis but um, but fundraising is going to be important always yeah so I know that you c collect art and you have a, yes. a, have a, a heart for art as yes. they say but um, can you communicate to our audience why is it so important to have arts in a big visible way in these organizational ways not just artists you know chopping away at their individual things which of course is great but to keep like museums going music festivals going theaters going uh, artist studios going why why uh, the arts are huge to humanity uh, the arts do a lot not only for our individual well-being but the arts very often help to shine a light and make clear uh, or put into some kind of relief issues that are going on in the world we live in in the very communities we live in they can communicate um, if it's a painter they paint about it if it's a playwright they write about it or a poet mm -hmm. they can write about it they give voice to what's going on in a community that either helps to illuminate a problem or helps to uh, you know illuminate something for the spirit but they're just absolutely vital vital to a uh, community's well-being and individually in my experience to an individual's well-being for the larger organizations they're also hugely important cultural aspects assets mm. and things like museums and symphonies music festivals theaters um, if these disappear for example if they are not supported they're not easy to recreate um, it's so always easier to keep something going is, than is, to start something new. Uh. Absolutely, yes, absolutely, and it's in our best interest to do that. It's also in the best interest of those organizations, though, to be sure that they're important, that they're relating to the communities in which they exist. What's the word? Relevant. Yeah, that they're relevant and that they're engaging the community. Uh, it's a two, it's a two way street. What do you consider the most challenging aspect of your job? Or is it like job by job basis? <laughs> well, it can be a job by job basis, but I think the things that the thing that that, that comes up probably most often two things: one, fundraising, yeah. always, particularly in in a county like this one, and and a field like the arts, where uh, you know people talk about the usual suspects uh, in terms of the chief donors, mm. and so you've got the and if you're talking about the arts, you've got arts organizations going very often to a circle of patrons that certainly has some familiarity mm -hmm. uh, you know that know one another or that are the same so that can be that that's challenging so like uh, widening the pool of people who feel as you do and as these organizations do that it's relevant and, and relevant to our county yeah. almost like yeah not just get creating more donor fatigue with these people that are yeah. good and that's all right and that's yeah. awesome but really yeah. drawing more people in that's to have, have a uh, commitment that's right it's exp it's absolutely mm -hmm. expanding the it's expanding the donor base and using existing donors importantly to help you do that mm. uh, and that just gets to be challenging for an organization most are understaffed yeah. Uh, and uh, and so it's going to be challenging to do the best job they can do because there's multiple jobs they are doing yeah all right board so, development oh. is, is huge board giving is important board member participation in fundraising is mm. important and a lot of boards um, are challenged in in those regards have difficulty uh, mounting successful board giving and board involved programs and there and it's really important but that again builds on the commitment. If someone has skin in the game, not just like a name on a that's, on the, the that's bottom right. of the uh, that's right. And I do, and I recognize that they're giving their time, and that's important. And they may be giving expertise, whether it's legal expertise or marketing expertise, or they help with fundraising events, special event kinds of things. All of that is very important. It it doesn't substitute though for board giving and board responsibility vis-a-vis -vis helping with donor development. Right. It's just that important. A lot of networking. Yeah. <sighs> okay. So, final shot here. Yeah. What's your personal uh, guide to um, collecting art? 
Ah, well, <laughs> if one looked at my art, it might be anything goes. Um, Interesting, as in I've got a very eclectic art collection, but I care very deeply about it, so I'm not, I'm not casual about it. A major change for me, major changes looking over the years, I have been at one time I collected um, antiques, and there aren't many antiques in my, in my, you know, lifestyle or my apartment anymore. Um, I do like antiquities, so I'm not counting antiquities as, uh, as antiques. I collect much, I'm, I'm very contemporary these days, I don't do much period um, collecting, and I've become not entirely California oriented, but very California oriented and very local. There are wonderful artists in the area, in Ohio, uh, Ohio, in Ojai, uh, Ventura, and, uh, and elsewhere. So I do still have things from my New York days. I traveled in Europe quite a bit with, with my New York company, so I still have some things that I collected abroad. Chicago, I still have some wonderful pieces that, that were among the first things I ever collected, but I have a lot of area artists that I think are very fine. Um, it's a pleasure to have a relationship sometimes mm. with the artist whose work you are collecting. Uh, and to develop that relationship as you as you collect the art over time. Um, if I were going to do it all over again, I might like to specialize at least in some aspect of collecting photographs, for example. Maybe I would have done photographs um, of a black and white period. I'm not sure what I might have done, but I might have had one specialization and then still anything goes. But I feel good about contemporary, for sure. Go local. I and think and follow so. Your I passion. think so. Fo absolutely follow your passion. Susan, it's been an honor and just a real pleasure. Thank you. And thanks for what you do for our community. You're welcome. My pleasure. That has been our Ventura TV. Thank you so much. And we'll see you again. I'm MB Hanrahan. Goodbye. <laughs>